Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jonathan and uh, today I'm going to show you um, how to integrate your application uh, with the ID decentralized identity and uh, in upcoming 40 something um, minutes you'll be uh, expecting to um, play with some of uh, some of our products um, and then also get your hands on to write some simple codes in order to get uh, an application up and running. All right, so let's get started and see what's... Uh, all right, so this talk or this workshop will mainly be focusing on integrating um, DID experience into your application. And uh, to, to ask uh, a question, it's like, what, is, what actually is DID auth? And how does it look like uh, in the real world? And to answer this question, I guess uh, we can uh, go and look at a real demo, and which is the the Arcblock website for this uh, DevCon. <clears throat> All right. So as you can see here uh, in this DevCon uh, website, we actually have. Uh, a login button on the on the uh, upper right here, and uh, we'll see. Uh, let's see what it, what happens if we click here. Uh, so it will pop up a uh, model, and then uh, with the QR code, and asks us to basically uh, like sign into this um, uh, application. And let's see, right now I'm going to put up my, um, uh, my wallet uh, on the phone in order to uh, let you see what's happening uh, on the mobile. And okay, so right now you can see on the right hand side is, is my phone and I have a QR code scanner. Uh, when I tap on it, I'm going to like scan a QR code here, and I'll get the login request on my phone. It says it's an application called DevCon 2020, and then it's asking me uh, to provide information uh, like name, email, and profile picture in order to log in. Uh, if I'm okay with it, I'll just slide to confirm. And as you can see, login successfully, uh, the model is dismissed. And uh, on the uh, upper right, where it used to be the login button, uh, it actually shows my profile picture and my name on it. <clears throat> All right, so this is basically uh, what it looks like if you integrate this um, DID experience um, to your application so that when your user uh, is going to log in to the uh, to to your app uh, with their decentralized identity this will be the whole uh, user flow uh, like scan the QR code and slide to confirm it things like that all right so let's go ahead and see uh, what's actually needed to make this happen so if you want to build your own DID auth experience, what type of components you need? So first of all, uh, you need ABT wallet. Uh, your user will need ABT wallet as well because they need to use uh, the wallet to manage their uh, ident decentralized identity and then use the wallet to scan QR code and log into a website. Uh, but on the other hand, as the developer, you also need ABT wallet because during the process, you're you're going to um, use the wallet to uh, help you create your application uh, and also set up your node and things like that. So a lot of things you will be doing uh, using the wallet. And then, and then the second thing is ABT, ABT node. Uh, you probably have heard from other talks that ABT node is at the very core of the whole uh, Arcblock framework and ecosystem uh, so it serves as a base layer for everything and on top of that um, 
comes the blocklets, which will be the building blocks for um, building decentralized applications. And, and uh, it's up to the developer's choice to pick whatever they, they need and then put them together uh, and then on, deploy them on top of the ABT node and build their own decentralized applications. And so for this uh, DID auth experience, what we'll, uh, the block that we'll need is the uh, DID connect block that. And this is something that's similar to uh, the Facebook App Center or Google App Center, where you're going there, uh, if you want to build a Facebook or Google login experience, you're going to the App Center and then create an application and stuff like that and then use the information or credentials provided in uh, the app center uh, and then use the integration guide or documents or whatever um, use those things to integrate your application into uh, the uh, login experience so basically like that and at the end of the day you have to write some codes uh, it's very simple but uh, you have to write some and all right so let's see uh i'm gonna give you a short uh intro of abt wallet uh i guess during some other talks uh my friend uh, my, my colleagues they already would uh, they already have show you some basic um a more in-depth actually more in-depth uh, introduction of abt wallet uh but here i'm just going to go go over it real quick so for ABT wallet, uh, it's a decentralized app, uh, wallet and helps users manage their identities. Um, and also we have two layers of security. One is a mechanism of password um, to help you protect um, the data during uh, the whole usage. Uh, but once your uh, the wallet is lost or something like that, uh, maybe your phone lost or whatever, if you want to recover um, your wallet, you will be able to use the password and the and the and, uh, and the backup file to do a full recovery. But if you you don't have the recovery file or backup file, uh, you can use the recovery codes to do a partial recovery and to get your uh, root key pairs um, back from uh, the uh, back back from uh, the recovery codes, and then. Uh, Related to login experience, the wallet actually uh, separates user profile and identities so that um, you will be able to submit your profile, um, whatever profile uh, you like during the login request. Um, so uh, your profile is not like to entirely connected or linked with your identity, whereas um, for some other services, you're you're pretty much linked with each other, um, and also for wallets, there are a bunch of other things you can do, like browse the decentralized applications and use them in the wallet, and like uh, send send transactions and receive uh, tokens and stuff like that. Uh, but that's way beyond today's uh, this workshop scope. So I'm going to. Just like give you a short uh, work through here and uh, you will see um, for the wallet, it has a cards tab, which is like listing all the accounts and later on, if you have any assets, you'll be listed here too. So each of these uh, cards is actually one of your accounts and then what, uh, every account it's actually uh, backed by a DID, as you can see here. It's like Z one M U uh, and and I M N B. Uh, so this is uh, the DID of this account. And for here is the profile, and uh, for profile, it actually um, it's actually serve as a template um, of your pro of your personal information. So. Uh, we saw when we scan a QR code and then it jumps up and then ask uh, the service may ask, or the app may ask me to provide some information. Uh, this profile is preset, pre, uh, uh, pre 
prepared um, so that I don't need to type in any profile every time I try to log in. Uh, but I'm free to change uh, the profile I'm gonna use every time I try to log into the same service and things like that. So it's like not totally linked. Um, and uh, other than that, it's basically, uh, okay, we have a tab here for you to uh, see what app you have, you've been used and be able to uh, use the app right in the app, uh, right in the wallet. And we have, uh, we don't, I don't have any transactions yet. So you'll be able to look at the transactions you, you, you just made. So this is a quick intro of uh, and walkthrough of the ABT wallet. Uh, so now let's move on to um, ABT node. So um, one prerequisite is that uh, you have to install Node.js in order to install ABT node because uh, the ABT node is depend on uh, Node.js. If you haven't installed it, please install it right now. And like I said before, ABT node is the base layer for the whole Arc block ecosystem. And on top of the node, uh, it actually serves um, serves the blocklets, and the blocklets are the building blocks for decentralized applications. And the whole node is actually running on a web-based interface. So. Uh, at the very, very beginning, you have to uh, use command line to kind of uh, install the ABT node software. But uh, after a few commands, you'll be able to just get rid of the uh, interface and then use the web interface to do everything from there. So let's try to set up an ABT node for now. And let's see. Um, Let's go to the terminal. All right. Uh, so installing ABT Node software is actually pretty easy. So it's uh, a, a npm uh, package. So if you want to install it, you just install like npm install uh, g global uh, for ABT Node CLI. So what, what this would do is to um, get the ABT node software and then install it in the local machine. And, and also it has some like command line interface or a few commands that you can use to initiate a node and start a node and stop a node and things like that. Uh, but after, once you configure the new node and also uh, once you start it, you can just switch to the browser to do whatever uh, you want with the node. All right, let's uh, wait for the installation. All right, uh, it's done. And, um, and then what we would need to do is to initialize uh, the node configuration. So I'll do abt node init. And I'll just go with the default, everything default uh, configuration and just to get it quickly up and running. So now after uh, like configuring it, uh, configure uh, and then we what we need to do is just like ABT node start and this will actually launch the node and uh, from now on we can turn to the browser and then see uh, and then continue the operation there right so Now let's go to the link uh, of the ABT node. Okay, so here, uh, like I said, you have to use a, uh, your ABT wallet uh, during the process sometimes. And this is when you're trying to set up a new node. Uh, 
you have to tell the node that you are the owner of the node and in the future if you want to install some paid blocklets uh, you'll be able to do so because you're you're the owner of the node and uh, if you previously paid for that you'll be able to uh, download and install that blocklet onto this node uh, just because you're the owner and uh, let's see all right let's uh, try to scan that QR code here and we'll just go with it and uh, now I'm as an owner is connected to the ABT node and I'll complete the setup and now I'm going to the dashboard right so uh, this is the uh, this is the dashboard and uh, in the dashboard uh, the overview part will be a bunch of like basic information of the node and stuff and uh, more importantly we'll be able to go to the marketplace and install um, block lads and which will let us have more capability uh, to build a decentralized application all right so right now we've been uh, we, we've finished setting up the ABT node so next up, we're going to uh, like uh, play with the DID Connect block lab. So there's a prerequisite here, uh, which is installing MongoDB um, because during uh, because like the the DID Connect service is actually some some sort of app center for uh, creating uh, applications and stuff. So uh, there are a bunch of informations that the DID Connect service needs to store and uh, this is where the mongodb comes in so uh, if you haven't had mongodb installed yet uh, please install it right now and uh, we're going to use the mongodb uh, uri later in the process <clears throat> and so did connect is a uh, block and um, which could be installed from the marketplace and um, after installing it from the marketplace, uh, we can start the blocklet and the blocklet itself is also uh, a web app. So you'll be able to go to the web interface of the DID Connect and then uh, do the app creation and the configuration and stuff, just like pretty much like what you would normally do in uh, Facebook or, or Google App Center and things like that. So. Uh, an important nature of the DID Connect and running on the ABT node is that you'll be able to deploy your own app center. For example, if you're uh, managing a bunch of applications and you don't have to rely on a third party um, app center or DID Connect service to help you manage the applications, um, and you'll be able to like just deploy the service for yourself uh and then uh, manage the application and all the configurations and stuff uh, this is in contrast to <clears throat> what we normally do with google and facebook like if we want to want to create a facebook app a google app we have to go to their app centers we cannot host our own app center um, to help us um, do the things uh, all right, so let's try to set up our application in DID Connect. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, now in this marketplace, uh, we can see DID Connect is here, and we're going to install the latest version of DID Connect. So right, DID Connect is being, is installed successfully, and uh, let's go and open it. So here, uh, we are actually uh, we we actually installed the DID Connect software. Uh, but the reason why we can we can start it at the moment is that we have some configurations that's that's not done yet. So uh, which is 
uh, this is where the MongoDB com comes in. So if you have um, MongoDB um, set up, you, you can uh, have the value filled in here. Uh, so it's like MongoDB and your MongoDB address or URL. And then uh, the database name will be DID Connect Service. And once we save this configuration, we'll be able to run DID Connect Service. So let's go ahead and start it. All right, so we've already started. And so we here we have a public interface for uh, DID Connect. Uh, and if we click on that, you will be able to see this um, DID Connect um, service. So uh, right now we have, so previously I've been uh, logged in. So uh, let me try to log out and do it once again so that everybody uh, knows what what is what it, it's like to um, to th the initial experience. So, all right, let's go. let's see here. Okay, so. Right now, what we will do is to like log into this DID Connect service. So it's the same experience as what we had before uh, logging to everything. So uh, it's like uh, as a developer, I'm logging in, logging in to this app center, and then uh, now we can create a new application. As a first-time user, um, we'll just call it demo, and uh, this is a demo. All right, so we can create an application, and upon create an application, uh, sorry, uh, I think my uh, my uh, streaming. It's lost again, so I have to do that one more time. Bear with me, please. And right, so now uh, I have to scan the QR code again because this, in this stage, I'm actually creating an application. So uh, instead of letting DID Connect generate uh, the key pair for you, you're actually as a developer using your own wallet to create a key pair for the new application and generate a new DID for the application. So, uh, so that in the future you have full control of your application. So here I'm gonna confirm and then uh, now uh, the demo app is actually created. So here we, we saw a uh, login component, we just let it start. And then uh, having it started, uh, there are a bunch of configuration that we have to make. So the first thing is the login message. This is where you can show some custom message to your uh, users that upon login. Uh, so to ask them to log in. So I'll just go with please log in to the app. And I'll choose full name, avatar, and email. And I'll uh, save changes. And for saving the changes, I'll scan and use the um, application DID and key pair I've just generated to sign the message. Um, so the last step is to kind of like enable the login experience. Right, so this login, uh, a login module has been configured uh, and now uh, we can move on to um, writing some codes to um, try uh, to to let the, the app connect to the DID connect and have that login experience and actually before uh, we jump in right into the code we have one more thing to <clears throat> kind of uh, 
configure it's the so right now in the integration tab we have like web integration and stuff and OAuth integration so today's example i'm going to use the react js and and use uh the web uh, to, to build a web app to um demonstrate so for here we have to set up a domain whitelist what is a domain whitelist so basically uh if you're running an app web app and then you're sending requests to the did connect uh, uh and then um say we, we have a user trying to log in and did connect will check the domain whitelist to see if the web app's uh, domain name is actually in the whitelist in order to protect the security of the user and also for the application um, so this is something similar to what facebook and google would have is like uh, having your domain name for your application uh, just for extra layer of security so for development purpose here we just give it a star uh, so that it gives uh, access to every domain um, and now and now we probably can start to um, jump to the codes for now and uh, right so let's go back to terminal and um, all right so, no let's go back to slides for sorry about that um, so for slide uh, for so for the next step we're actually going to write some codes and the process of writing uh, so the things that we need to do in in the in the coding part is several things so first is to uh, create a re and a react app and then we need to add the ID connect dependency to the application and uh, also uh, the next step is to configure uh, the ID session provider it's actually a wrapper of a React app that's uh, that makes it depend on the uh, session uh, login section of the app uh, of the user, and also the next step is to get the session contest from uh, DID Connect and um, dependency and see uh, if the there is a valid session. If so, we're gonna show the user's information. Uh, like the avatar and uh, name and stuff like that. If not, we're gonna show a button allowing the users to uh, log in uh, with DID Connect. And lastly, we need to specify the service host and app DID, uh, which is like telling the React app where to connect and what's the the ID of the, your application, so that the so that when you send a request to DID Connect, uh, it can verify uh, your the application's identity and then move forward to process the login request and last we can run and see how it goes so uh, let's do it um, right now we're gonna switch back to terminal and uh, the first thing we need to do is to create a react app so it's like mpx react uh, uh, it's like we create React app and we call it like just like my app. So it's gonna take a while, um, and uh, you guys can uh, also do that. And if you already have some React app uh, template that's you already um, generated before, you can reuse those. But it's gonna take a while. Uh, to install the dependency and stuff like that.
this actually might be the most time consuming part of the whole coding and um, development process. All right, so it looks like finally uh, we're, we're done with the installation of the React app. Let's see. What's... Right, okay. Um, so right now, uh, what we're doing, what we need to do is to add the dependency um, to the project, which is the DID Connect package. So we're gonna add it for here, and uh, after installing the dependency, we can turn to Turn to coding and see um, <clears throat> and see what what type of what kind of codes we need to we need to write. All right, so. Right now we've add, done adding the dependency and stuff. So let's go to uh, the code and see what, it's, what it is like. All right, so uh, I guess this is, this is it. So uh, we have Okay, we have to actually go to uh, okay. Um, right. So next up, what we're going to do is to um, <clears throat> change a little bit of the codes here. Uh, so right now we don't need the service worker. Uh, we just get rid of it, and what we need to do is to uh, when ask the React DOM to render. Um, uh, render something uh, that's uh, render something that's like a wrapper of the React app and the wrapper will be able to um, like get the session information uh, using DID uh, connect 
package uh, dependency, <clears throat> right? So uh, what we need to do here is first to uh, like import the dependency, uh, like. Uh, PID, uh, okay. PID session provider we, we need to add it here uh, and then what we need to do is to add a wrapper of the application so this wrapper application would initialize a PID session provider and then wrap the whole uh, React app in inside this component. And then, last but not least, we are going to ask the DOM to render this uh, wrapped app. And next up, we'll go moving on to app app.js. And then here, what we need to do is to um, first. We need to uh, import some dependency, which is uh, the DID session context. And also we need to uh, need the use context. Uh, from react. And then we need to initialize the uh, we need to get the session status from the contest uh, it, for the application and then <clears throat> and then we will need to uh, set up a uh, session markup which will be uh, the elements on the web page that we uh, generated depend on the session status so we'll see We'll add this code here. So the logic here is like if the session is loading, we'll show the message of like initializing the session. And then if uh, the session is finished loading, and then we'll, ch we'll check if there's actually uh, a user logged in already. And then if so, we'll show his profile picture and his name and stuff like that. And then provide uh, a link for the users to click to log out. And if there's no user logged in, uh, the markup will be like, uh, you're not logged in, and then click on uh, a, a button to uh, try to log in. And then we'll need to add the markup, kind of like render the markup, markup into the, uh, the application. <clears throat> So, uh, in the, the application component, app component, we'll uh, return the uh, session markup here. And the last thing to do, if you guys still remember, is to, um, to specify that the app DID and service host, as you can see here, uh, it actually triggers an arrow because we haven't specified them yet. So we need to pass on these two parameters to um, kind of like initiate uh, a DID session provider. So for here, uh, we're, we're, we'll be able to um, get the session ID from the web, uh, the integration guide here uh, on, on the DID Connect service. We'll just copy them here and uh, paste them here. All right, so this is quite simple and everything uh, about codes are already done here. And uh, let's go and try run the application. All right, let's switch to the browser and see what's going on there okay. all right 
uh, so the app is actually building right now and uh, let's wait for the react app to to build Okay, so it's there and uh, oops, let me just log out first and uh, so hang on a second. Um, Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to here. Uh, okay, so let's see how the codes work in action here. Uh, so as you can see here we have um, a login button and if we click on that it will pop up the uh, QR code which will be uh, which will be something familiar to us I guess and then uh, right now let's go and scan the QR code and for now if you can see on my phone it actually shows a login request that the lo request is from uh, a demo app and it asks for me the information that the, that uh, i just specified on the did connect website so it's like name profile picture and email so if i go ahead and slide to login Right, so it's oops. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so now I'm logged in, and then I have my name here, my profile picture here. And then if I go back to um, the DID Connect service, if I go to user, I'll be able to see there's a user logged in happening just now. And uh, uh, I'll have a log uh, of my login there. So in this case, the DID Connect has already been uh, integrated. All right. so. Not sure have you guys been following that uh, and uh, it's quite easy actually so um, all right so let's wrap up um, for the coding part you just have to create a new react app and then add the dependency of did connect to the react app and then configure it, the did session provider and use um, the session contacts and specify service ID and app DID and you're good to go. So this is like, like a very very basic DID login integration for a web application. And for more capability of DID and DID auth protocol, uh, we'll have a, a website uh, deployed here. It's a wallet playground and there are a bunch of like test cases that 
uh, you can go and play with uh, it's like a transfer money and the cross chain uh, scenario and stuff like that so you'll be able to uh, experience and find out more about uh, DID capability other than like authentication and login all right so thank you for joining this uh, workshop today and uh, we'll, let's see if you guys have any questions and stuff that I can help with thanks for joining